Hey everybody, this is Natalie from Power Moon Tarot. Welcome to your reading. Today's reading is called Sugar and Spice, What They Like About You. So we're going to talk about sugar and spice and everything nice today, okay? And uh, we have three piles to choose from. We have pile number one, which is the pumpkin spice tea light. We have pile number two, which is the yellow tea light. And we have pile number three, which is the orange tea light. So take a deep breath and ground your energy and think about what color is resonating with you today. What color is resonating with your aura today? And what are you really feeling? And of course you can watch more than one pile. You're welcome to watch all the piles if you need a little boost or if you've got multiple people that you're considering, okay? So we're going to go ahead and get into it. And for those of you that are curious, we will be having an 18 plus extended reading, which you can follow me to my Vimeo channel. And there'll be a link to my Vimeo channel below. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss me when I go live. And also, you may be wondering if I do personal readings. I do indeed. And there's information in the description box below for how to request one. I also have another YouTube channel called Light of Ascension Tarot with a bunch of other readings on there, more like spiritual type readings. If you're interested, you can check out that channel and there'll be a link in the description box below to that channel. And finally, if you want to follow me on TikTok or Instagram, details are in the description box below for how to do so. Thank you so much, everybody. And let's go ahead and get into your reading. Today is the first day of cancer season. How are you guys doing? How are my cancers doing out there? Drop me a comment. We're just moved out of Gemini season and into cancer season and it already feels distinctly different <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and get into it and um, let's do it everybody pile number one welcome to your reading you chose the pumpkin spice tea light and today's reading is called sugar and spice what they like about you okay so we are gonna get into it the queen of cups is on the bottom of the deck here she represents cancer in the tarot and it is day one of cancer season, so let's go ahead and get into it. Pile number one, we are going to do it. And for those of you that would like to join me on the extended reading, there will be a link below to my Vimeo channel, okay? So we're gonna find out regarding your person. Let's go ahead and see. I'm gonna get some channeled messages and then we'll get into the tarot. Spirits, angels, and guides, please connect me to the energy of pile number one who comes here today seeking your guidance. Thank you for allowing me to be the medium and the channel between yourself and pile number one. Okay. All right. Spirit is talking to me about like fruit flies or flies. Maybe some of you are having flies around or maybe you had um, like, you know, you saw like an insect crawling somewhere in your house because I am getting that. Isn't it horrifying when that happens? Pile number one. Maybe some of you have been dealing with some annoying pests at your home, okay? So let's see, let's see what else, what else? Okay, Spirit just said arithmetic to me, so maybe you're trying to show someone how to do math or maybe you're like, I never really learned arithmetic or something like that, okay? But Spirit just said arithmetic to me, pile number one. Let's see what else here. I just heard more or less, right? So maybe you're like, more or less, I know how to do math, okay? <laughs> Maybe some of you have a job that requires you to do a little bit of math and you're like, well, more or less, okay? Um, but let's go ahead and see what else for pile number one. Have you guys ever applied for a job and then be like, yeah, I think I could do that, like more or less, right? Um, even though your skills don't directly or completely align. <laughs> let's see what else here, okay. So Spirit is showing me the earth like as seen from space, you know, when it's like really big and glowing and blues and greens and all of that, okay? So maybe you watched a movie where they were looking down onto Earth and seeing that, um, or you saw a picture of that somewhere, or you've always wanted to kind of like look down and see that, okay? Um, anyway, more people are going into space. Did you guys know that guy that jumped from the stratosphere like probably about eight years ago or something? He did like the highest free fall jump and like ever and he was above the stratosphere like basically up in space when he did a skydive 
Anyway, check it out, pile number one, if you if you haven't seen it. Let's see, what else here for pile number one, okay? I just heard something about the rush, okay? The rush. A lot of people like that feeling of like riding their bike or riding a motorcycle or like jumping out of a plane because they get that wind on their face and it feels like a rush. What else here for pile number one? Okay, maybe one of you had a family member that went skydiving, maybe you did. Maybe some of you have a close family member who's like kind of a daredevil, like an evil Knievel type of a thing. Um, what about the people that do all the stunts in movies, right? Some people actually go to school for that, I think, don't they, to be like a, a stunt man? Okay, so I have no idea why I'm coming up with all of this pile number one, maybe, some of you know someone who does that for a living or you've always wondered like what goes on behind the scenes in the movies, okay? And, um, okay. Spirit also said quid pro quo to me too, which is like, you know, tit for tat, this for that. So, but that's a legal term. So maybe some of you work in a legal field or you do some type of legal writing, all right? Or maybe you have a parent that does or something like that. But let's go ahead Okay, Spirit's showing me someone like spilling coffee all over something, okay? Like a cup of coffee and then they knock it with their arm and then it spills it over papers or over the table or something like that. So hopefully you haven't had that recently. I'm also getting the energy of someone who like tripped or like, you know, was walking down the street and kind of like tripped over their feet or like spilled the coffee or, you know, <laughs> these types of things, pile number one. So, ah, yes, there it is, the Ten of Swords, okay, on the bottom of the deck. So maybe there's some things that have been going on, like mishaps or accidents or just little things, and you're like, I have had enough, you know, okay, pile number one. And, um, you know, the thing is with the Ten Swords in the back, I mean, they, they might be like little incidents that happen here and there, here and there, and here and there, but they tend to add up, don't they, pile number one? They tend to, like all of life's little irritating things tend to add up and create like that. I'm so over it. I'm so done, okay? And the Ten of Swords in the Tarot is Sun in Gemini. So maybe for some of you here, Gemini season was pretty rough on you. Like there was a lot of you know, little things and ups and downs and, and overwhelming energy, okay? And, you know, moving into cancer season, it's like, I need a damn break, okay? So let's go ahead and get into it, pile number one. Let's go ahead and see sugar and spice, what they like about you, okay, pile number one. And um, Spirit just gave me the name Mary, but also like Mary Magdalene. So maybe some of you uh, like her or you read up on her, but okay, we have tribe of the kindred. I carry your heart, I carry it in mine, all right? So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get all the cards out first, pile number one, and then I'm gonna talk to you about what your person likes, yeah. So four of swords here, talking about that chill factor. Ooh, the knight of cups, romance, I like it. And you know, it reminds me of that song, I wanna get next to you, okay? And we have Mercury messages, travel and communication. Okay, very cool. Pile number one, I'm already getting things, but let's keep going. We have magnet and Aquarius energy. So some of you could have Aquarian energy in your chart or they could, this person could, um, but also just feeling drawn to someone like a magnet, okay? Like kindred spirits or being drawn to someone like a magnet, all right? Spirits giving me the J names like Jennifer, Jen, okay, but let's go ahead and see what else. Um, I just heard we did the monster mash, all right? Pile number one, maybe some of you like Halloween. Um, but we have the ascendant and outlook, okay? What's your outlook and how do you see things? We have abundance, okay. Like, you know, I believe in myself. I believe in you, I believe in me. Like, you know, there's room for everyone here to be abundant and happy and cheerful. We have trust, trusting in abundance. And then we have the sacral chakra, ooh, pile number one. You guys also have the pumpkin spice tea light, which looks kind of like, you know, it's the exact same color as the sacral chakra right here too. So talking about a really deep and a deep, you know, passionate connection with the Knight of Cups in the sacral chakra, all right? And um, 
We have here lizard, all right? Like a magnet, all right? And we have here, that's a fire. Lizard represents fire as far as the animals go. And oh, psychic abilities. You know what, lizard energy in this deck has to do with psychic sensitivities and psychic abilities, okay? So some of you here could be extremely intuitive and um, be very talented, okay? Pile number one, or you just know when things are gonna happen without anyone even having to tell you. Um, and I think you are very like psych psychically sensitive, pile number one. We have the nine of swords. Yeah, so that goes with the 10 of swords that we saw on the bottom of the deck, doesn't it? Um, at the beginning of your reading. And, um, you know, I think you guys, I think, okay, here's what I'm getting, pile number one, is, you know, when other people are really going through it, really struggling, or really, you know, feeling hard done by, you don't make people feel worse. You actually make people feel better. And with this Knight of Cups here, we have Scorpio energy and the Four of Swords in the Tarot is Jupiter, okay? Um, is, a Ju is a Libra card, Jupiter and Libra, and the Nine of Swords is Gemini's, okay? So we could have Libra, Gemini, or Scorpio showing up already in this reading. And um, some of you could have that on your ascendant. But, you know, talk about the Knight of Cups. I carry your heart and I carry it in mine. And um, this person feeling like, you know, you really lift them up or you're really um, caring, romantic. This person feels like very calm in your presence. Also, we have trust here. So this person trusts you, I feel, pile number one. I feel like they trust you not to hurt them or they trust you to be there for them, okay? And some of you may give some really good advice too and you help people calm down and you make people feel like they don't have to go through things alone. And um, this person, whether you're a man or a woman with the sacral chakra, really loving the kindness, the calmness, the sweetness. And you know, sometimes when you're around people, energy can be very grating, pile number one. But because you're so psychically sensitive, um, I feel like you guys try not to burden other people all the time with you know with what's going on with you but i also feel like you're there for other people okay and i feel like this person is saying with the nine of swords like they've been worried about their money or they've been worried about abundance or they're like okay i have to trust that good things are going to come into my life but i feel like this person feels very safe with you with the four of swords and the knight of cups and I feel like with this message here um, and Mercury messages, and look at this blue water here with all of this communication, right? I also think that they feel like when they talk to you, your communication with them comes from a very deep place, from a very, you know, like the things that you say are very romantic. Some of you may be very poetic. Um, and... I also feel like you guys are a good friend. You're a comforting person to be around, I feel like, too, okay? And um, I feel like when this person gets a message from you, they're like, ah, you know? Some of you could have Mercury in Scorpio um, here, too, or you could have Mercury in a water sign, Mercury in Pisces, Mercury in Cancer, or Mercury in Scorpio. And, I mean, I feel like you guys just have the right touch as well okay and um like i feel you guys are very sensitive to people and you don't push them too far and because of that i feel like this person feels safe to kind of show you um if they're going through an experience they know you're not gonna like put them down for it or think less of them or make fun of them okay um so that's a very beautiful thing pile number one all right and because you are who you are, I feel like this person is saying, I carry you, I carry you in my heart and you carry, you know, you carry me in your heart. And um, I also feel like this person is saying with abundance and trust that if something were to go really, really wrong in their life, that they would trust you to be there for them and like that you wouldn't let them drown or you wouldn't let them, like you wouldn't let anything bad happen to the people that you care about, okay? And I also feel like with this Mercury and Scorpio card here, like you guys, um, the way you communicate is like very, 
like lusty and it's very um, deep and it's very like, you know, intense, okay? And um, some of you may be very creative here too with the sacral chakra. And I feel like the message that you transmit to this person is I'm open and I'm, you know, I'm open and I, and I want to get to know you. Okay. Like a lot of people in today's society are like very turned off. Do you know what I'm saying? Pile number one, they're not like, you know, they ignore other people. They, you can tell there's not a lot of emotion. Some people are pretty bitter and, um, some people are like not, a lot of people are just not plugged into their sensitivities, okay? Some of you here could be very empathic as well. And, um, you know, and I think for some of you, you may, I feel like some of you have a friend here with these two women. I feel like you have a friend, a really good friend that is coming through in this reading and is also appreciating you and saying, you know, I carry your heart in mine and you carry mine in yours and I trust you, okay? Um, and there is love between you both here, okay? And I'm going to see if I can get, um, I'm seeing the number seven here. So someone may live in apartment number seven or someone's birthday could be in the month of July. I'm also seeing 47 and 57 as numbers. Maybe you have that in your phone number. Um, you know, I carry your heart and I carry it in mine. I guess here is a quote by E.E. E. Cummings. Maybe some of you like that poet or you've read poetry like that before, okay? And um, I also feel like this person loves your eyes. Like some of you may do a really beautiful smoky eye and you may have like really pouty lips. And um, I mean, a lot of emotion is expressed in your eyes, okay? A lot of people have dead eyes these days. Like they can't be bothered. They're not emotional. They're shut down. Um, you know, and I feel like you guys are the opposite of that, okay? Creative, uh, deep, deep people, okay? And um, some of you could also have Aries in your chart too, um, here as well. Like you may have water in your chart, but you may also have Aries. And with the Knight of Cups, you know, you're a person to take action, right? Travel, you know, like I feel like with the Knight of Cups and travel, it's like, you know, for love, I'd go anywhere or do anything. It's extremely passionate, okay? And I feel like with the Four of Swords here, this person's like, I could really imagine myself getting super comfortable with you or really being able to relax around you, okay? And I also feel like this person is saying with Magnet, Ascendant, Abundance, and Trust, like, you know, when you're really in the flow pile, number one, you have the ability to draw to you like a magnet, um, really good and positive experiences, okay? A lot of people in today's world are not very trusting either, okay? Like they're just not trusting. And um, this person talking about trust and being able to trust what you're telling them and, you know, and, and that, you know, you're not lying and things like that, okay? And you guys may not like liars either, um, some of you here may cry like very easily um, if your feelings are hurt. And I, I feel like this person's putting their hand on your face and being like, you know, doing that kind of thing with your face and pinching your cheeks or holding your cheeks a little bit and being like, you're so cute or you're so sweet, you know, and like the world doesn't deserve you, pile number one. You're so cute and you're so sweet, okay? And um, I also feel like with Magnet here, um, you guys may be, we could have Scorpio and Aquarius with this magnet energy here, but there is also something very, like, um, something very, like, you draw people to you with what you say and how you look is what I feel, okay? And with the Four of Swords, you don't let a lot of things bother you all the time. That's why I think this Ten of Swords on the bottom of the deck, like, Gemini season could have been really hard for you guys, and it could have been a lot of little things that added up to a lot of stuff, okay? And then we have fire here with the lizard and psychic abilities. And um, so this person, like, you know, they're like, you're straight fire and you're a chameleon and you can blend in into al almost any situation and you make people feel um, very, like, at home, okay? 
And um, the lizard energy is also really creative. And it it's very vibrant too. And it has like a lot of colors, like a lot of spectrum of colors around it. Okay. And so you being like a very vibrant and sensitive person, deep person, pile number two, okay, is what I feel like this person, and I'm just hearing them say, you know, you're not like other people, you're not like anyone else, you know, you may not be much like anyone else than they've ever met here, pile number one, or maybe they haven't met very many people like you, because in today's world, most people are afraid to show like their feelings or afraid to say what they're feeling or to get things off their chest or to do that creatively, okay? And um, with outlook and abundance, I feel like you guys have a very, like this person loves how you express yourself and your attitude, okay, and your aura, all right? And we have likeness here. So this person feels that you're, you're like them in a way, or they want to be more like you in a way. But I feel like, you know, you always keep the door open to abundance. You always keep the door open to flow and to love and to trust and create creativity. Um, even if like you're going through a tough time. Okay. And, um, some of you here with the nine of swords, you may have struggled with nightmares when you were younger, or maybe at times you still do because you're very psychically sensitive. Pile number one, and I feel like this person's like, I'll protect you, you know? They're like, I'll take care of you, I'll protect you, okay? I do think you inspire like some protective feelings within this person, okay? And you may be one of those people that when you describe different things in the like pain in the world and suffering in the world like your eyes start welling up with tears and you know you have that very sensitive aspect of you okay and very creative with the lizard and the sacral chakra very very creative pile number one but you have to be careful that you don't let your circuits get overloaded okay and um some of you may pick up psychic energy in the astral plane and you know that can be a lot okay when you're sensitive it can be a lot to deal with okay and but i feel like with this ascendant and outlook this person likes your personality okay because because in astrology the ascendant is the helm or basically the seat of our personality and what tethers us into our soul in this lifetime so this person really picking up on that maybe really picking up on your ascendant for those of you that know your ascendant in astrology and like a magnet being drawn to that. Okay. So this person may tell you like, oh yeah, I always go for, you know, Scorpio ascendants, or I always go for Libra ascendants, or I always go for Aquarius ascendants. Okay. So, or Gemini ascendants, right. And you can see the twins right here too. The antlers on their heads represent those psychic antennas. So like I said, pile number one, not only do you have like a romantic interest coming through here, but I also feel like you have a friendship or a friend that is popping in to, you know, to say like, hey, what's up? And that they appreciate you and care for you, okay? We have sugar and spice, right? So, I mean, I feel like you guys are very, very sugar, oftentimes more than like spice spice but I feel like where you guys get spicy is like maybe in when you talk about like what you want to do from like a sensual perspective or when you finally get in the bedroom with someone or you finally open up to someone and let them in I feel like you guys get like super spicy all right um because I feel outwardly maybe you don't always appear maybe sometimes if people hurt a friend or hurt someone you care about i can see that scorpio side coming out or i can see that spicy side of you coming out pile number one but with the sacral chakra you know i feel like you, the image that you guys put out or the personality that you guys show is someone who's like very very sweet and very kind okay and um yeah, and with the four swords, like I can truly relax with you, okay? So let's go ahead and see. Let's go ahead and see for pile number one. Let's see what else here. 
Okay, Spirit's saying, giving me the J names again. I think I said J names earlier, like Jeff or John or names. Maybe you know someone with that name, pile number one, or you interacted with someone, okay, with that name, like a Jeremy, Jeff, or John, or something like that. Okay, J names, Spirit's giving me J names. Could be first name or last name. What else for pile number one, Spirit, okay? <laughs> Spirit is saying teepee. TP, okay, TP. So maybe some of you, um, what are those things that you can go? I'm forgetting the name now where you can go and rent them out overnight, like a yurt, you know, like renting a yurt and just doing something romantic or sleeping under the stars, right? That type of thing. Uh, very romantic, I feel like you can be pile number one and um, trusting, you know, when somebody is truthful with you and then you relax okay so let's go ahead and see what does this person what would they like pile number one to know spirit what would they like pile number one to know the four of pentacles i got you okay there's the knight of pentacles on the bottom of the deck so you know like we could with with uh scorpio here with the knight of cups we could have taurus with the knight of pentacles okay and um, they are opposite signs. So we could have Taurus Scorpio people here, but I feel like this person is saying, I got you, all right? With the four of pentacles, like you got my back, I got your back. I got you and I'm not going anywhere, okay? I got you and, <laughs> and I'm not going anywhere, all right? Now this person may not like change at times and it may be hard for them to deal with change with the four of pentacles and the nine of swords. And um, some of you may also be going through some changes that have been a little bit nerve wracking or hard to deal with, okay? Because I feel like someone doesn't really wanna change locations, but they have to. We have travel here, travel and communication. Um, but I, I feel like the main message here is I'm not going anywhere, okay? Like I am not leaving your life, I'm not going anywhere. And the idea of that happening like makes them very like, upset here with the nine of swords like they don't even like to think thoughts like that pile number one they're like i'm staying right here as long as you stay right here <laughs> is what i feel okay and um yeah so you know with the knight of pentacles it's like um we'll take it day by day and we'll face things head on and take it day by day and we won't let anybody hold us back from what we want okay so I like that pile number one, because that to me shows you, that's a message of support is what I feel, okay? Also, I feel like with this four of pentacles, they're saying, I wanna hug you. Like, you know, I don't know, like you guys may give really, really good hugs, but I feel like this person's like, I wanna, you know, I wanna hug you, I want to embrace you, let me hold you, okay? I'm gonna wrap myself around you. Do you guys know that song? please you, tease you, wrap my arms around you. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited and I just can't hide it, okay? Um, the Four of Pentacles doesn't look like, you know, like the most excited jumping up and down type of an image, right? It's the sun in Capricorn, so it's pretty, it's pretty chill, especially here, okay? But um, but I feel like this person's like, hey, you know, I'm going to take care of you or I'm going to wrap you in my arms, all right, and hold you close, like really, 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 really close and not let go. All right, pile number one, that is what I am getting for you, my darlings. I hope that that reading resonated for you. And for those of you that would like to check out my Vimeo channel, we will be having an 18 plus extended reading. If you'd like to meet me there, there'll be a link below. And if you really enjoy my readings and you'd like to show me a little love, I do have a tip jar on my channel too in the description box. Thank you so much, pile number one, and take care, my loves. Let's move on to pile number two, okay. All right. All righty. Pile number two, welcome to your reading. You chose the yellow tea light and today's reading is called Sugar and Spice, what they like about you, okay? We're gonna go ahead and get into your reading. There'll be an 18 plus extended reading for those of you that would like to join me after this reading on my Vimeo channel and there'll be a link to that below. Let's go ahead and get into it for pile number Number two, okay? Spirit's already telling me like, 
There's been things that have been worrying you guys lately, but you're you're trying to keep an upbeat attitude, okay? Pile number two, but let's go ahead and tap into the energy. I'll get channeled messages for first. I almost said four, four. So maybe someone has something coming up on the fourth or the number four is important to you. Someone has a birthday in the fourth month or on the fourth day of the year, okay? Or maybe your birthday adds up to a four, like the 22nd, okay? But let's go ahead and get into it. Spirits, angels, and guides, please connect me to the energy of pile number two who comes here today seeking your guidance. Thank you for allowing me to be the medium in the channel between yourself and pile number two. Okay, so Spirit is showing me um, Busta Rhymes, which is a rapper from like the 90s. Wasn't Busta Rhymes in the Wu-Tang Clan pile number three? I forget. But anyway, um, Spirit is talking about, so maybe you guys have been like listening to old school rap lately, or you like Busta Rhymes or something, but, um, or maybe you've been busting some rhymes on people lately, or you like music, but let's go ahead and see what else, okay? <laughs> I just heard that's clown shit, okay? So maybe someone was doing something or behaving a certain way, pile number two, and you're like, that's clown shit, or that person's acting, acting silly, okay? But let's see what else here. Okay, <laughs> spirits like Bozo the Clown, all right? So maybe some of you have something talked, we're talking about that recently. I also feel like somebody who ha is wearing shoes that is like way too big for them. Some of you may have worn like your brother's shoes or your dad's shoes or something like that or your grandfather's and they're like way too big for you. Also, you could be wearing your boyfriend's shoes or something like that. But I feel like somebody put on shoes to go outside and do something really quick and they were like way too big for them, okay? Maybe that happened growing up. You guys got hand-me-downs and it's like, these are way too big for me, okay? <laughs> but anyway, pile number two, let's keep the party, okay? Um, <laughs> Spirit is showing me um, like white powder in a line. They're showing me, I mean, who knows? It could be sugar, right? Sugar, spice, and everything nice. Also, Spirit is telling me something about um, teal, the color teal, okay? Or teal as a, as a thing, okay? Have you guys seen that documentary about teal swan on um, whatchamacallit on Hulu, I think it was? Anyway, um, I always find her, I, no offense if you like her pile number two, but I, I always found her kind of weird from the beginning. But anyway, spirit, some of you may be wearing teal. I also feel like someone who has teal fingernails or just got their finger, fingernails done with teal. Let's see what else for pile number two, please. Okay. Glitter, glitter, pile number two. Let's see what else. Shine, shine, glitter, glitter. What else for my pile number twos? Okay, um, Spirit is saying something about like a Mexican salad or, you know, I don't even know what you, maybe that's like a tostada or like um, like a taco salad or something. Maybe some of you had one of those recently or you know how to make a really good Mexican salad. I don't know like what that would ultimately be, pile number one. Is it, it's probably more complicated than like a taco salad. But anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, I feel like someone is making something for an event or is like, I'm going to make my like famous dish, but like no one really knows what it is. It's like a bunch of different things in it. Okay. So pile number two, let's go ahead and get into it. Talk about spice, right? Sugar and spice and everything nice. Let's go ahead and see. There's the nine of pentacles. Yeah. Um, keeping a super upbeat attitude. Um, you know, things aren't always like, I wouldn't say the Nine of Pentacles has the most upbeat attitude. She's Venus in Virgo, um, but she is happy for the progress that she's made in her life, okay? And she can see the good things coming her way, even if at times it doesn't feel that way, like when you're saving for something. And um, because right before that is the Eight of Pentacles, which is the Lord of Prudence, right? So it's like, I was very prudent with my money or my investments or whatever, and now things are kind of paying off. Um, but the Nine of Pentacles too, like very, very classy and beautiful and well-dressed. So let's go ahead and get into it for my pile number twos. Let's do it. Sugar and spice. I feel like this person's saying, I like your style right out the gate, pile number two, okay? I like the way you work it. 
No diggity, no doubt, pile number two. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I like the way you work it, okay? Let's do it. Let's see what else here. We have, ooh, we have Daring Dreamer. Change the way you see, not the way you look. Oh, wow, talking about confidence, right? Like, you know, like um, with the Nine of Pentacles here, like change the way you see yourself, not the way you look, okay? And I feel like, you know, this is about like having a healthy self-confidence and um, shining from within, okay? But I also feel like you guys have really good style or you, it might be more of like a simplistic style at times um, with Venus and Virgo, but it's clean and it looks good. You may even have a little bit of quirky, quirkiness going on there too, all right? Um, but I also feel like you're very encouraging to other people as well to see the good in themselves and to see the positive in things, okay? And there's that teal color I was seeing there. Um, and then we have we have this black hair with the white streaks in it. So some of you may have some gray popping through or you may have like two-tone colored hair, um, something like that, okay? If my gray came through in beautiful streaks like that, I would just let it come through <laughs> instead of coloring coloring my hair, okay? Um, and I see this butterfly re resting on your throat chakra pile number one. So, you know, wanting to be positive and encourage other people and changing the way that you speak or changing the way that you think about your life and yourself, okay? And changing like what you say about yourself when you look in the mirror, all right? We have Daring Dreamer here and card number 20. And we have the Seven of Swords, okay? And we have the Four of Cups. We have closed off, guarded, and resistant, okay? I'm already getting a message here, pile number two. So let's keep, we have game over here. And then we have the first house of self, okay? And um, we have caution, interesting message here, pile number one. We have caution and sweetness, okay? And um, we have the base chakra, okay? So... Pile number one or pile number two, I'm already getting the energy of you showing up for this person and being there for them and checking in on them and, you know, making sure that they're okay or like just, just, you know, not putting a lot of pressure on this person, pile number two, letting them kind of be, because I do feel like this person can be, um, like closed off at times to love. They may have a hard time like loving themselves, okay? And they may have a hard time letting themselves open up to someone. But with the seven of swords here, I feel like you don't give up pile number two. And maybe that's been an issue for you in the past with this game over, like daring dreamer, like you always look for the good in situations or you know, maybe in the past, you've always tried to kind of check in with people and see like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Like, you know, how, how have you been? Okay. And like checking in with people and, um, yeah. So some of you may be wondering, like, do, do I need to be more like you're done or I'm cutting you off? Okay. Cause I feel like some of you have really shared your sweetness and we're talking about sugar and spice and we have sweetness here. Some of you have really shared your sweetness with other people and maybe you're wondering with this game over, do I need to change and become more spicy and be more like done, 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 okay? Because maybe some of you have dealt with people that were not very connected to their emotions with the four of cups here, but with this base chakra and closed off, we're like, very sexual or very, you know, into that type of energy or wanting that type of energy, but also not very emotionally open at times, okay? Um, and this person could be really moody or take things really personally at times, pile number two, surprisingly, even if they act like they're guarded. And I feel like we have the seven of swords in the tarot is the moon in Aquarius, and then the four of cups is the moon in cancer okay so we could have cancer and aquarian energies here also this is from my deck game over and this is a scorpio card from my deck okay so i think like you know this whole game over with the seven of swords and the four of cups 
you guys may be thinking, am I just like dreaming about this situation? I'm also seeing a small white mouse right now, which is interesting. Okay, I don't know why I'm seeing. I'm also, looks like I'm seeing an angel um, or like a warrior with a shield and a sword. Could be Archangel Michael, okay? Um, anyway, I also feel like somebody's here who's like traveling in a bubble, which is interesting. But um, I feel like you guys are always like seeing if something could work because you're a daring dreamer and you dare to dream and you put yourself out there, okay? Um, and some of you may have been doing this with somebody where, you know, there was a real physical attraction here with the base chakra, but it's like, is that all you wanted? You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I feel some of you may be asking, should Natalie, like, should I bring the help to bring this person out of their shell? Should I keep kind of like checking in on them? Should I keep seeing, you know, how they are? Also, I feel like pile number two, you can handle this person's moods. You know, like there's not a lot of people that can, this person may get very moody and closed off at times. And um, they may be like pretty much taken up with, you know, like their survival needs. And is like, you know, I don't really have time to like, you know, deal with love type of thing. Okay. And some of you here make, make a joke out of things here too, with the seven of swords. I feel like some of you have a very funny personality and some of you may have had family members that could be very moody or bitter at times. I feel like some of you guys, you know, from the time that you were a teenager, maybe some of you were like a class clown or you just make people laugh and you make people, if they're feeling down in the dumps and they're feeling like not good about themselves with this first house of self, here comes pile number two to like, you know, kind of like liven up the party. I also feel like you guys really liven up the party and you make things more fun. Do you guys know that song by Fleetwood Mac called You Make Loving Fun? But that's that's something I'm getting right now. Maybe you don't even know. You're like, who's Fleetwood Mac? But anyway, <laughs> Stevie Nicks, pile number two. Anyway, she was in that group. But um, also there was Lindsay, was it Lindsay Cunningham or Buckingham? Anyway, Steve or Lindsay or a name like that might be important here. I'm just seeing the um, UPS truck. So hopefully my dog doesn't see it and go crazy. The big brown truck. All right. Maybe some of you know someone with a big brown truck or a big old or someone who works for a delivery service because it's kind of weird that I'm seeing that right now. Okay. But anyway, um, somebody who's primarily concerned, like I've got to like take care of me. I don't really always have time. And I feel like you guys were always making people laugh or you're making people like your antics. And I feel like you do this because you care about people with this daring dreamer. And um, because you're like genuinely funny, I feel like you guys are also really good at putting up with people who are like, maybe sometimes kind of emotionally insensitive. All right, pile number two. And you guys might be thinking, you know, is it time that I just, you know, like, I, that I'm just like, whatever, you know, like to that energy. We have Buffalo. So it takes a lot to kind of like rile you guys up. I feel like you guys can really take a lot. And um, what people may not realize under like your effervescent, fun loving nature um, is that A, like you really care about people and you really want them to be okay. And even if there is a storm or a lot of changes going on around, like you are very strong, okay? And I feel like some people may accuse you of being a dreamer at times, pile number two, or going back and forth on things. But the real people in your life know that you're actually like, you know, very, very strong. You just may show it in a different way, okay? But I also feel like this Buffalo is getting a little bit mad. It's like, you know, I feel like this person is saying they like you because like, you know, they can count on you or they feel like, you know, you'll be there if they're going through changes in life, if they're going through hardships, you know, like you're a person that can help lighten the mood or help make things more fun again 
or to really just be there with someone. Also with the Buffalo too, it's like, you know, horny. You know what I'm saying, pile number two? So some of you, um, you know, I feel like someone here could be like super horny or they, when they're in those moods, they just kind of like follow them through and they keep going type of thing, all right? And, um, or someone has like an insatiable appetite, you know, pile number two, all right? And um, with Buffalo representing Earth, we could have Earth signs or people that have Earth in their chart, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We have Moon in Aquarius and Moon in Qu Cancer here and the Scorpio card, all right? Um, yeah, so, you know, I also feel like this person's like, you're insatiable, like you can handle a lot when it comes to like your physical body. Um, I feel like some of you, you may be into liking things a little bit rougher here with this game over in Buffalo, okay? <laughs> or this person likes it because they think you can handle things that are a bit rougher here with the base chakra, okay? But I feel like what you guys are saying, like, is that all that you want, you know? And am I gonna continue to give my sweetness I do feel like this person likes your love, pile number two. They may like what's between your legs and they may like your love. You know what I'm saying? The loving that you give, you make loving fun with the seven of swords, okay? And I also feel like you don't do the same boring thing all the time. Like your personality with the first house and seven of swords is spicy and fun and different and unique and, um, you know, outgoing at times, okay? But I do think there's an inner part of you with the buffalo and the game over here is like, am I really being appreciated or are people just using me, right? Because back in the day, the buffalo would be used for all of its various parts and nothing was wasted. Do you know what I'm saying? So maybe some of you are like, you know, yeah, like I am fun. I do make loving fun. I do have an interesting, you know, way of looking at myself. Also, some of you may have like a fluctuating self image at times, sometimes feeling, you know, very pretty or very handsome. And then other times, like, I don't feel like doing anything today, game over. I don't feel like letting anyone see me. I'm in a bad mood or something, you know? Um, <laughs> So pile number two, you may go through some of those ups and downs. And I know how it goes too. It's interesting because my boyfriend always talks about like during um, when the moon starts going into Sagittarius and Capricorn, he says he starts feeling ugly because <laughs> the month cycles through all, tw you know, the moon cycles through all 12 signs in a month. Okay. And he keeps track of the moon cycles. So he's like, when the moon goes into Sagittarius and Capricorn monthly, I start feeling ugly. All right. So it could be just that kind of like, I don't know why spirit brought that up pile number two, but it's straight up two o'clock right now. And you're reading on my clock. So, you know, Hey, it's two o'clock in pile number two, which tells me I'm hitting something here for you. Pile number two, we have trust here. Okay, and I feel like what you guys wonder is like, am I gonna get my needs met? You know, am I gonna get the same thing back in return? Okay, and um, yeah, so I feel like some of you have that question. Here's the king of pentacles. I mentioned the earth sign energy, Virgo, okay? So the king of pentacles and the tarot represents Virgo. But when I see him, I oftentimes think of Taurus, okay? So this is a person who is very much your opposite. I feel pile number two. Um, you are like, you know, a quirky dreamer. And this person is really concerned about money, you know, material wealth, moving up at their work, you know, amassing wealth, amassing money with the buffalo and abundance, okay? Um, this person may even be kind of cheap or stingy at times. And I feel like you guys are not like cheap or stingy with your love, okay? And, um, you know, I feel like this person likes that you trust them or it seems like, you know, you trust them without maybe having a lot to go on or that, you know, I also think you're different than this person. And I, I think they find it refreshing pile number two, because no matter what, you always seem to land on your feet. And I feel like you guys do take risks in life. Okay. 
And I think you just have a quirky, fun personality. And you know, you guys go for things, I feel like. You really put yourself out there and go for things. And I feel like this person really admires that because you know, for them, they may be good at making money, they may be good at running a business, they may be good at, you know, buying a home at a young age, they may be good at, you know, having stability every day, you know, doing things the same every day, which can certainly bring success, right? Base chakra can certainly bring success in someone's life, but I also feel like this person gets very bored with the four of cups, like, you know, they have what they need, but I also feel this person gets emotionally unhappy a lot. And I feel like you flirt with this person a lot, pile number two, okay? And you, you brighten up their life, you cheer their life up, okay? And you make things less boring for them and less routine. And, um, you know, you make them, it's like almost like they can live life vicariously through you. And maybe some people in your family, maybe some of you, this is like, yeah, that also resonates with your family or the way things are in your family, okay? Some of you may have been taking a different path than your family, or some of you may be quite quirky compared to them or their idea of what you should be doing, right? But I feel like you give this kind of like breath of fresh air to this person, okay? Um, and even though they may not like really show it, because I feel this person with this four of cups and closed off and guarded, they have a hard time showing their emotions or they may have a hard time admitting that they're not happy because I feel like this person has a lot of pride or they may take a lot of stock in the material world. It's like, I have everything I need, but why am I not like super happy? Okay, like I've got everything I need around me, but I feel emotionally unfulfilled or I feel bored, okay? And then you come along, this fancy, fancy, free, you know, this trust card reminds me of the fool and the seven of swords here and you come along, you know, injecting all of this like, lighthearted, fun, dare to dream, adventure, energy into this person's life. And I, I feel it's very emotionally intriguing to them, pile number two, but I also feel like they've got some serious barriers within themselves to kind of like breaking free from that. And I think the question you guys are asking probably at this point, pile number two, because you're with the nine of pentacles on the bottom of the deck, you're really starting to focus on you putting like where your time, effort, money, you know, everything is going to and accounting for that. Okay, pile number two. And so I feel like, you know, also I feel like there's a good, healthy self-esteem waiting for you that's within you that is not gonna be rocked by anything, okay? And this nine of pentacles is like, I deserve better and I'm gonna get serious about wanting better for myself, okay? And so I feel like some of you are wondering, like, I don't, with this game over, I don't really wanna play this game with this person anymore. And you know, with this caution and sweetness, I do feel like this person has a hard time like with putting their heart out on the line. And you guys could be asking, is it worth it? You know, at the end of the day, is it worth it? And, um, you know, because I do feel like a lot of people like these qualities about you. Maybe, I mean, maybe some of you legitimately bugged people in your family and you felt like a weird, you know, you felt like the outcast or something, okay? I just want to assure you, pile number two, that your personality is spicy and sweet. And if people can't handle that, then maybe they should just go live in a hole somewhere, okay? <laughs> Maybe they should just go be miserable on their own time, okay? And um, I feel like you guys genuinely want to see other people happy and help them be happy, but I feel like sometimes it interferes in your own happiness, okay? So let's get a card here for my pile number twos. Spirit, what would you like pile number two to know about this situation? Pile number two, we're going to take it to the extended reading next and get some 18 plus cards and we'll also get more information about this situation okay so um, there'll be a link to my vimeo channel below but spirit what would you like pile number two to know or understand about this situation please what does pile number two need to know or understand here okay um the two of swords 
Okay, and the devil is on the bottom of the deck. So the two of swords is great, you know, but it also can be a lie that we tell ourselves, right? Because the two of swords represents compromise. And I feel like some of you, um, you know, you're a lot more emotionally mature than, for some of you that are younger here, you're actually a lot more emotionally mature than people give you credit for, pile number two, big time. Because I think you understand that in relationships, there's sometimes compromises that have to be made. But with the devil here on the bottom of the deck, it's like, have I compromised myself too much? Have I compromised myself now to the point that I'm blind to actually what's going on? And the question of like, am I actually happy in this compromise? And I feel like maybe you guys are thinking at times like you're compromising yourself, okay? I just feel like you guys wanna see people get along. This is the moon and Libra card and that relationships are very important to you. Um, but some people don't have the same capacity as you, pile number two. And I think that's what spirit is saying. And you guys may be bending over to give other people additional capacity when they don't have the capacity. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, you know, the two of swords can be a piece that is around us, like feeling peace, but it also can be kind of like a contrived piece. Like, okay, I'm telling myself everything's okay, but it's not really like, you know, and with the devil on the bottom of the deck, I feel like spirit is wanting you to look at your patterns of maybe sacrificing what you want too much because compromise and peace and love are beautiful, you know, things to aspire to. And you guys have that within you, but not everyone is deserving of your energy. And something I have to ask you, pile number two is A, are your needs being met? And B, would you actually be happy in this situation if it was like a long-term thing? Okay, and these things may be going back and forth in your mind here. And I think you guys may be a little bit on the fence about it, this situation or trying to make a decision about it. And hopefully pile number two, I gave you some good guidance there that will help open up your mind to, I mean, with the two of swords we could do, it's moon and Libra. So we could do a pros and cons list, right? Here's a pro of staying with this person. Here's a con of staying with this person, right? And kind of like try to make a decision that way because I feel like with the seven of swords here, you guys may go back and forth, like thinking, what should I do? What should I do? Okay. So that's what I'm going to tell you, pile number two. I mean, I can't, in the, I can't like be like, here's your prescription and write it and give it to you. And then you follow it to the letter, right? It's your life. So you have to make your decisions, but hopefully like this reading, um, is opening up a personal dialogue for you within you. And I'd love to see you guys on the extended reading. If you'd like to go deeper with me, we'll be getting some 18 plus messages and we'll also be finding out more about this person's intentions and what's going on. Okay, pile number two. So if you feel like meeting me there, there'll be a link to my Vimeo channel below. And if you enjoy my readings and they're helpful to you, I do have a little tip jar in my description box and um, it's not required of course, but it's always much appreciated. Thank you so much, pile number two and take care. Let's move on to pile number three. Okay, let's do it. Pile number three, welcome to your reading. You chose the orange tea light. Today's reading is called Sugar Spice and everything nice, pile number three. And we're gonna find out what this person likes about you and what we can say about this connection, okay? For those of you that would like to go deeper with me, there'll be a link below in my Vimeo channel to the 18 plus extended reading if you feel like joining me there, okay? Pile number three, so let's go ahead and do it, my loves. Spirits, angels, and guides, please connect me to the energy of pile number three who comes here today seeking your guidance. Thank you for allowing me to be the medium and the channel <laughs> between yourself and pile number three. Okay, pile number three, I, I'm laughing like that because spirit was just like burn rubber, okay? Um, so maybe like someone really taking off fast from something or it's like, I'm so speedy, you can't even see me, like burn rubber. Or maybe someone 
screeched their tires really loudly and was like burning rubber outside of your house. And you're like, shut up. I'm trying to sleep, you know, but spirits like burn rubber. Okay. Um, pedal to the metal, burn rubber. Maybe something smells like burnt rubber or like, you know, when they're pouring construction and it's like concrete and it has that kind of smell. All right. Pile number three, some of you could have a significant other that works in construction or a parent or a relative or someone close to you that has worked in the construction business because I'm getting that, all right? Pile number three. Let's go ahead and see what else here. Okay, I feel like some of you may have grown up in a single parent household and maybe at times you felt like I'm just kind of like here to kind of like falter on my own or maybe feeling, uh, for those of you that were only child, you know, only children and you were raised by a single parent, um, who, you know, had to work all the time or maybe wasn't around. Okay. I am getting that, um, energy here. All right. Spirit just told me cherries, cherries. So maybe you're having something that's cherry flavored or lip gloss or lipstick or something like that, but cherry, um, cherry flavored cola, cherry flavored funk, funky pile number three. I think that's a name of an album, cherry flavored funk, but anyway, uh, <laughs> Let's see, so cherry red lips, perhaps, pile number three. Um, I think those shirts with like the cherries on them are so cute, pile number three, but anyway. Um, okay, you know how someone can kind of like tie a, like a cherry, like a stem of a cherry with their tongue? Maybe you guys have a friend that knows how to do that or you knew how to do that when you were younger or I feel like I feel like somebody like hitting your arm and being like, watch what I can do, watch what I can do. Or maybe you were doing that to someone else, okay? I just heard brain freeze. And so maybe some of you ate a lot of ice cream recently and I was like, oh my God, brain freeze or a popsicle or something. Um, but I'm getting brain freeze. Also spirit is saying to be brain nerd, okay? So maybe someone here describes themselves as nerdy or brainy or something like that, okay? Sometimes, I mean, the whole nerdy thing is kind of in style now and people get those, you know, glasses that aren't even prescription because they want to look brainy or nerdy. But I have one, of, I have a couple pairs of those. Um, the computer glasses are pretty good for the eyes as well, okay? Talk about orange here, eating carrots for the eyesight. Pile number three, anything else here for channeled messages? Um, <laughs> spirits like Scooby-Dooby-Doo. So maybe some of you like Scooby-Doo or you dressed up as a Scooby-Doo character for Halloween or you were thinking about doing some cosplay or something like that, okay? Here's the emperor on the bottom of the deck here. Pile number three, okay? Um, the emperor. I just heard brains and beauty. So some of you, I feel like, you know, you may come off as kind of intimidating for some of you. Maybe you have both brains and beauty, um, but also we could have an Aries coming through here because the emperor is um, Aries, okay? And I feel like someone's saying like, I'm not giving up on you or something, okay? And um, some of you could have had a family member that said that to another family member, like I'm not giving up on you or, I refuse to give up on something, okay? For some of you, it could have been a father figure, all right? But let's go ahead and get into it, pile number three, or you may feel like your father figure gave up on you. There's, I just opened it up, there's the sun, okay? Talking about you guys, how much life you bring into a situation and how much you make people laugh and smile. Let's go ahead with the sun and the emperor, we could have Aries and Leo. Let's go ahead and see pile number three, sugar and spice, what they like about you. We have freaking beautiful. Oh my God, pile number three. It's better to be absolutely ridiculous than absolutely boring any day of the week. And we have freaking beautiful. So this person popping through right away to say you're freaking beautiful, pile number three. I love that. Quirky, different, unique, and beautiful. Hey now, pile number three. And it looks like she's wearing rabbit ears or there's maybe some of you have been seeing a lot of rabbits recently, but 
or you know the whole thing of screwing like rabbits type of thing freaking beautiful here's the high priestess okay pile number three mysterious and look at she's wearing a mask here very mysterious and um yeah I'm seeing some, okay, I'm seeing somebody that had blonde hair or extensions, like blonde hair extensions or something back in the day or maybe, but then now it's like maybe your hair is short and dark now, pile number three. I feel like somebody had some like very drastic changes to their appearance, okay, recently or maybe you did this in your past, like you would change your appearance drastically at times, kind of depending on like what mood you were in, like your style really changing and shifting and very mysterious. Okay, we have the world card here, two major arcanas, okay? So this person, the high priestess in the tarot represents Isis. She represents Hecate. She represents the goddess, okay? She, re she represents Artemis. So if, if you guys resonate with those goddesses, she, re she resonates with you know, like all the, all the great goddesses. Okay. And, um, you know, with this world card, you know, the high priestess, you could call her like the queen of heaven is definitely something that you could call her. Also, that's kind of empressy too, is the queen of heaven. Um, but say, you know, same, same queen of heaven. And I feel like with this world card here, this person's like, you know, your like being with you is like heaven or you're like the queen of heaven or the king of heaven, okay? And um, I also feel like this person saying like, I don't ever really, I don't want to lose you, you know? Like, I don't, I don't want to lose you, okay? Or somebody being a big part of someone's life and not wanting to lose them is what I feel here too. We have the sun, oh my God, we saw the emperor and the sun on the bottom of the deck already. We have sun, strength, and empowerment. Yeah, pile number three. I feel like you guys have the ability to go through life's ups and downs. And some of you may have been through some, you know, tough, tough cycles, especially when you were younger. I feel like pile number three. Okay, and with the world and the high priestess, I feel like some of you had to grow up pretty quickly. Okay, and... Um, you know, some of you, we, Saturn is the world card and the high priestess is the moon. So some people here may have moon and Saturn or have Saturn moon contacts in their chart. Okay. So it's like, you know, having to grow up pretty early on and having to kind of support yourself, pile number three. And maybe you've had cycles like that in your life before, but you're very strong and empowered and you're an individual and you stand on your own and look at the way she's holding that light, you know? Um, and it's like, I feel like this person is saying like you're an example for other people that they admire your strength and um, like that you radiate, you know? Like we have this freaking beautiful card here and that you just kind of radiate this beautiful light, pile number three. But it may not have always been easy for you guys, all right, with the high priestess in the world um, but I feel like some of you in this lifetime are, are having major leaps and bounds when it comes to your soul evolution, okay? And some of you may already be aware of this, all right? Um, this person really like encouraging you to um, not hide yourself, to not mask who you are, and to, you know, to really put yourself out there. Maybe some of you kind of held yourselves back when you were younger, Okay, but this person saying no, like, no, sun goddess or sun god, like, you know, stand tall, hold your head high, you know, let your message inspire others. Okay, so very inspiring here, pile number three. Okay, and this person may have said that you even kind of look like a goddess or a god or something, you know, like you look like a Greek goddess or you look like an Adonis or something like that because you're really giving those looks and those vibes, I feel like, pile number three, okay? And um, yeah, you know, it's like you have my attention, pile number three. We have the star and healer, of course, pile number three, okay? And this is from my deck here, 
and um, talk about being freaking beautiful, right? With the star and the sun, the stun, the the star or the sun is actually the most important star in our universe, at least for us on Earth. Okay, at least for us in the world. Okay, and um, with the sun and the star here, we could have Leo and Aquarius energies. Uh, we could have Moon in Leo or Aquarius here with the High Priestess. Um, but you shine here with this star and you know she looks like she has an expression on her face like you know it hasn't always been easy for me and I've had to carry a lot on my shoulders and sometimes you know it seems like life is a drag you know but look at that huge orange star with your guys's orange tea light okay this person saying I really really notice you and some of you may not be feeling like people notice you at times, but I feel like like you're hidden with the high priestess here and that people aren't really knowing you or seeing you. Some of you may be quite mysterious, all right? But I feel like this person sees like, you know, also the orange tea light is the sacral chakra too. So I feel like this person sees the divine feminine in you. They see the creativity within you, okay? And yeah very interesting pile number three we have square and challenge and that's coming out under the high priestess okay and um you know in the tree of life if you i don't know if you guys have studied kabbalah or the tree of life but we have on the left side of the high priestess we have the pillar of severity and on the right side we have the pillar of mercy okay and she sits in between in the pillar of mildness okay and i feel like some of you had some very challenging you know upbringings or you had some very challenging things that happened to you and you've had to you know muddle through things at times i feel pile number three but some of you here are very talented healers and you're also freaking beautiful and i feel like the things that have really brought you down or caused you a lot of challenge, maybe even psychologically, pile number three. I feel like some people could have psychologically abused you growing up or could have, um, you know, like I feel for some of you, it's been a challenge to bring, you know, to heal or to bring those healing abilities out of you, okay? But I feel like here, this person is saying, you know, hey, I really admire you. I don't know if I would have done as well as you did giving the circumstances that you went through. Okay. And um, yeah, so this person saying that no matter what is going on, you have the ability to tackle it, face it head on and make something better out of it. Okay. And um, this is very motivating. Squares in astrology make things happen. You know, it makes things happen. And um, I'm not trying to give any reason why, like, people hurt children, especially pile number three. That's horrible. And, um, or why children have, like, some children have so, such challenging um, environments growing up, okay? But I just want to say, pile number three, that you've really matured in this lifetime into somebody who has so much strength and power, okay? So embrace it. Let's see, we have mystery. Yeah, this person likes that you're not that easy to figure out. Also, I think, you know, you represent a challenge to this person because you're anything but boring and you're something completely unique to this person. I feel like, you know, it may be a little bit intimidating, a little bit challenging to get to know you all right, you, you're coming off as being mysterious and hard to penetrate, pile number three, okay? And um, yeah, but this person thinks you're freaking beautiful, okay? And let's see what else. Also, I feel like with card number 16, some of you could have became aware of yourself as a healer around age 16 or something happened when you were age 16 that really set you apart from other people, okay? Like some period you came through of your life or some event that happened, okay? And when you were around that age and um, this person seeing you as like a challenge and somebody who's mysterious and someone that they've never really 
like met before. We have success here. And the world is actually success, okay? The world is the administrative intelligence. So it's the order of the universe, right? And um, it does represent accomplishment, you know? And we have mystery success. So people wondering, like, given how much you've been through, like, how does pile number three become this freaking beautiful person or this healer, okay? And um, this person wanting to have success with you and wondering, like, how do I do that? And how do I go about that? Because I feel like some of the things that they've used in the past, maybe to impress people, don't exactly, like impress you that much you know which isn't a bad thing i just think you guys are used to being independent and facing a lot of challenges in your life so if somebody really wants to get to know you or really wants to impress you it's probably not going to be the regular regular schmegular things that impress you pile number three okay like i think spiritual development under duress is one of the things that really impresses you and um yeah, very cool. Ah, we have the third eye chakra. Of course we do with the high, pro high priestess, the star, the healer, the third eye. Okay, and I feel like with this mystery and third eye, this purple color here, it's like this person's wondering, how do you do what you do? How do you know what you know? How do you do what you do? Okay, and also, I feel like this person is saying, like, you guys following your intuition brings you a lot of success in your life. And a lot of people don't have enough guts to do that. You know, they don't have enough guts to do that. Instead, they'll just, um, you know, accept whatever life hands them. And I feel like that isn't you guys, okay? And that does that. You guys take, take what take what you can from a situation and run with it and make it better, okay? And you're anything but boring, okay? Even some of you here may be very successful and people may wonder like, how did pile number three become so successful? It's because of your powerful, because you're a powerful healer and you have an amazing third eye and you're very disciplined and empowered, all right? Pile number three. So you're coming across as quite the, package here pile number three with the world card like the complete package so you know this person wanting to impress you i feel with the world card and the challenge with the world card like how do i impress pile number three or how do i get pile number three's attention is what i feel like they're saying we have the oyster here so you know again you guys not the easiest to get to know, right? Um, not the easiest to to get to know, but very alluring and very appealing. But I feel like you guys don't let people get super close to you immediately. It may be hard for people to kind of penetrate beneath the surface, okay? But you know, it's like there's a beautiful pearl there or a beautiful treasure behind all of that. Okay. Also oysters are Afro aphrodisiacs too. So I feel like this person is saying like the taste of you or the smell of you or that type of thing really turns me on. Okay. And they want to know what's going on underneath the outer shell here. Okay. They're trying to, you know, <laughs> work their way into you. I feel like pile number three and they're wanting to know like, you know, where's the, um, you know, because I think you guys present a bit of a challenge, maybe in ways that they haven't had before, pile number three, okay? But I think it's just drawing you into them even more. And um, we have here, we have manifestation. Yeah, so with oyster and manifestation, I feel like you guys don't always let people know what you're manifesting or what you're doing. And then when you actually have it happen, people are shocked because they maybe didn't know that you had it in you or they didn't know that you would be so good at what you do. Some of you are very, very talented. Pile number three. Can you guys hear that in the background? It sounds like, <laughs> sounds like a loud buzzing noise. But anyway, pile number three, you're very, very talented and that may bother some people. You know what I mean? Some people may be straight up 
you know, intimidated or jealous of you at times. It's better to be absolutely ridiculous than to be boring, freaking beautiful. I mean, you're anything but that, pile number three. You're not boring. But I also think you don't always let everyone know what you're up to, okay? And here's the fool. Oh my God. So this person is wondering, we have the world and the fool. You have all three major arcanas here in your reading pile number three. So this is big time. Um, and I feel like this person is thinking like, how do I impress pile number three? Okay. And I feel like with the fool, this person sees like a lot of potential in this situation with manifestation and fool. And I think they're thinking about like, how do I go about this? How do I open up? You know, how do I open myself up or how do I get pile number three to consider me or open themselves up to me? Okay. And I feel like the idea of being with you is very exciting to this person. Okay. And for them, it would represent a success. It would represent a wish coming true to them or a manifestation coming through for them. Okay. And I feel like this person sometimes thinks that what they want, like slips them by at times. And they wonder like, if I took a chance and if I really went for it, would pile number three open up to me? Would pile number three, like let me in? Would pile number three give me an opportunity? Okay. And with the fool, I feel like this person is saying, I want to shoot my shot and see how it goes. Okay. And when they think of you, I feel like this person gets very excited at the thought of discovering you. Do you know what I'm saying? Pile number three, like with the oyster energy here, like the thought of d pursuing you and being successful and discovering you. Okay. And um, I feel like this person was kind of bored before. I feel like other people have liked this person. I feel like maybe they were in a relationship or have been in a relationship where they were in it and were committed, but they weren't really, it was like over or boring or they weren't really feeling it, okay? I feel like this person is saying, if I would have met you first or I would have gone straight for you, like it's almost like with the fool here is like, is it too late? to kind of manifest this. And with this manifestation, we see the fool walking into the magician. Like, I wanna to talk to you. I wanna to get to know you. I wanna see the possibilities here. I wanna get the energy moving between us, the magician, okay? But what will pile number three do? What will pile number three say to me, right? Is pile number three open to me emotionally, okay? Because I do think you are a big mystery to this person, pile number three, okay? Very interesting reading. Also, I feel like with the third eye, this person trying to tap into successfully here, like what, um, you know, what would be the best way to, I feel like this person trying to connect with you psychically or trying to, you know, be like, hey, you know, like, could you see us together? because the third eye has to do with vision, right? And the fool sees all the possibilities. So it's like, when, would you envision us having a connection and it being successful and us having what we want and need and manifesting the life that we want? Like, would, you, would pile number three be open to that? And what is pile number three's vision of the future? What does that look like for pile number three? Okay, is what I feel like this person is saying. Um, with the fool and the manifestation here, it's like, I want to manifest a new beginning. I want to open up this connection. I want to successfully identify what would get pile number three to open up to me. All right. Very interesting reading pile number three, whatever you're doing is working on this person. I feel like, you know, like they're a bloodhound, like sniffing out your trail here. Okay. Or sniffing out your, <laughs> your footsteps. And, you know, I feel like this person is saying with the fool too, that when they fall, they fall hard, you know? And um, it's like, you know, especially when they feel like this mysterious here with this mystery, this mysterious pull to someone. And it's not always like that with everyone else, but when this person feels that mysterious energy or charge go through them, I feel like they're saying here with the fool, like when I fall, 
I fall hard, okay? So, you know, they may be a little bit unsure with you coming through as the high priestess in the world. They may be a little bit unsure of like where your boundaries are and like where you're at. And um, like maybe even not knowing what your relationship status is or not knowing like if you're open to being pursued for some of you here, okay? Um, you know, the high priestess can be like a wish and the world card can be like the reality of a situation. So it's like, I wish the reality of this would shift the fool and that I would kind of like fall head over heels for pile number three, okay? So let's go ahead and see. For pile number three spirit, can you give me, what does pile number three need to know here? And then pile number three, we'll take it to your 18 plus extended reading. For those of you that would like to follow me to my Vimeo channel, there'll be a link to that below, okay? So what else does pile number three need to know about this situation, please? Okay, we have the eight of cups. So I feel like this person and then temperance is on the bottom of the deck. So this person, Maybe sometimes like thinking pile number three is not going to be open to me, like, you know, um, or maybe thinking about giving up because it's like, gee, I don't know, you know, is pile number three. Um, I feel like if this person doesn't pursue you, though, pile number three, they're going to be very sad about it. It could be like a big missed opportunity. And um, with temperance on the bottom of the deck, I feel like they're just trying to figure out how to do it. They may need to leave another situation or they may need to like leave what they build up, built up in their life behind so that they can completely start over. And that can be a little bit scary, okay? Um, that can be a little bit scary. And I do feel like this person is questioning themselves, okay? And um, they're trying to get some clarity on what they should do, but I feel like emotionally they're a little lost it's like what do i do and with temperance on the bottom of the deck it's like teach me show me you know show me what i should do and um maybe looking for a sign from you pile number three okay or wanting the universe to kind of throw them a bone do you know what i'm saying pile number three with temperance on the bottom of the deck and um the temperance angel is of course freaking beautiful all right and i feel like this person with the eight of cups may sometimes feel like I don't deserve my happiness or, you know, I'm stuck or I can't be happy, this type of thing. And um, maybe you guys feel that way too. At times you have felt that heaviness and that burden um, in trying to find your own happiness, right? Because the Eight of Cups is where we move on or we leave something that's very disappointing in order to find our Nine of Cups, in order to find our happiness, all right? And I think you guys know in life that with temperance here that there's sorrow and you know and there's also happiness in life and it's a big mix of everything at the end of the day okay um but i also feel like this person is saying like if i don't do something about this i would be disappointed in myself because it's almost like with this temperance i want the opportunity to kind of flow with you i want the opportunity to like coexist with you. I want the opportunity to mix and mingle our energies together instead of just giving up and letting go, okay? So that is what I am getting for you, pile number three. I hope that that reading resonated for you and you got some value out of it, okay? Um, one last thing, pile number three, um, I would just say don't give up on your dreams and don't give up on yourself, okay? And even if you've been through a rough patch here with the High Priestess and the World card and things have been kind of depressing and upsetting and dark, you know, going through that dark night of the soul because the High Priestess crosses the abyss in the Tree of Life and she has to travel a far distance to get there, okay? Just like with the World card, we have to travel a far distance to get there, okay? So maybe you guys need some more energy here with the Fool, like, you know, some more vitality, physical vitality or energy. And for some of you, maybe you're gonna draw some of that energy from the sun, okay? With this sun strength and empowerment. So pile number three, I'd love to see you on the extended reading if you'd like to join me there. Thank you so much to everybody who joined their reading today. Um, thank you so, so much. And I love all your comments, your likes, your shares, your subscriptions. If you enjoyed that reading and you love what I do, you can leave me a little tip and there's a little tip jar in my description box. 
Thank you so much, pile number three. And thank you to everyone who came to their reading today. Take care.